It's Thursday lunchtime. I still haven't got anything done as far as our unboxing, which I've got to do every week, and I'm going to be away next week, so I've got to do two this week. Running out of time, but we'll get there. Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. Welcome back to the channel, and thanks for coming along. We've got to get something out of this emergency storage shed every week. It's a commitment I've made. Let's go and have a look. It's weeks like this when it's a real struggle to get something done because I've got so much else going on. Heading back to the farm next week. We have a bathroom renovation starting early next week as well. And I'm trying to build an emergency shower, which will be a separate video. You'll probably see that one after this one. Let's grab something from here. We're making a fair bit of progress. The piles are going down. If you haven't joined my channel, I've got to empty this shed one box at a time and it's going to take probably years, and there's all sorts of treasures here. We might just do... Look, there's a couple of old fax machines here that fell over the other day. They're in my road. I'm only going to scrap them. Let's scrap those in this video, see if we can get anything valuable out of them, uh, if there's much good scrap, if there's any salvageable parts. Um, so let's deal with those in this video, and I'm going to start another one today for next week while I'm away, and I think we'll get that milk crate there, uh, I was looking for some plumbing fittings earlier this morning and there is a little tub of fittings there. So let's go through that milk crate uh, next. But this video, let's scrap out some old fax machines. Okay, these have been hanging around for ages. I would have brought these from the shop and I probably meant to scrap them out there long ago when they just got duck shoved from one spot to another. This one's a brother. It's not overly old. It might be 1990s, early 2000s. When did fax machines become old tech? I'm not sure. And this one's quite a bit older. It's a Remington. And there could be some interesting stuff in this one. It's um, obviously got a broken top section. That's a better angle. We just want to see what we can salvage out of them. The bulk of them are probably just going to go to the e-waste uh, crates out at the transfer station. But I like to have a rummage first and see if I can get any value. Let's start with the more modern one. And I think it's probably only likely to have one mid-grade board in it and a little bit of wire. There's probably not going to be much in here reusable at all. So let's grab some tools and get into it. Okay, easy access to the bottom panel here. Let's get a tray for our screws. I like to use these meat trays you get from the supermarket. They stack really nicely and they're handy for when you're dismantling things or even when you're sorting. All right, our bottom panel has an earth wire. You don't need to worry about unscrewing that. Let's just snip the wire off. We can go in our shred steel. All right, we have, looks like three individual boards. And they were attached from the screws from underneath, so that's pretty easy to get into. It's the handset cable. We should have unplugged that first. The handset's already gone. I'll just snip the plugs off here. And I'll put that in with my data cable. Okay, it does all unplug. Mostly unplugs. I like to unplug them rather than just cut wires because the the mid-grade boards, you need to have all the plugs off them anyway. So there we go. There's a nice mid-grade board. It's got a removable EEPROM there. Uh, sometimes I believe they can have gold in them. It's easy just to scratch the sticker off and have a look in the window. That board will, will go as a mid-grade board as it will, as it is. But if we take the EEPROM off here, it just plugs into a socket. The board will still go as a mid-grade board. So we haven't downgraded it too far. And this way we can sell the chip separately. I don't think it's got any market as an usable chip. But we do get a much better price for um, IC chips. Um, so that's the, the little window there you're looking. I can't see any evidence of gold. It looks like they're silver contacts. Uh, I'm not really sure if there's much gold in them, but I know I get paid uh, per kilo if I save these up. And it, of course, it takes a lot to make a kilo uh, and the gold ones pay better. And that's just through e-waste bin. So I'll put that in a, a bucket I've got. I think it'll just go in with the normal chips, but I might keep the e-proms separate just in case bin pays a bit more for them. And as I said, that can still go as a mid-grade board. There's not very much value in those because they're pretty light. But I think they're worth saving, and they're fun to pull apart. Snip the wires off here. Now, that's just a power board, and Ben doesn't buy power boards. Some of you you guys might have uh, a buyer for power boards. I don't, so I'll just put in that in the tub to go to the transfer station here. I'm not going to save power boards. 
I might just lever this chip off because again the chips uh, are saleable. Uh, sometimes you can just get under them with a screwdriver and lever them out of the board. Sometimes when you try that they just break in half. But that one came out all right. So I've just got a jar for those. And you know, it's going to take a long time to get anywhere, but it's kind of that that collecting um hunter-gatherer sort of gene that we have we just like to save up things transformers aren't worth getting off they're so light so they can just go to the transfer station as e-waste i'll probably even throw it back in here uh, we have a bit of wiring and there's another board here oh that's it that's the main power board this one probably isn't a power board as such but it would only go as a low grade board so this is a power board it's got a transformer that's possibly worth getting off uh, there's a fuse. I like to take the fuses because I keep them. They're sometimes handy in here. This thing hasn't had power through it for a long, long time, so we don't need to worry about shorting out the capacitor. But if you want to get into a habit, it's not a bad idea. And you probably would have noticed then that I did that wrong. I held the shaft of the screwdriver, so if it had had a power in, I would have probably got a zap. So <laughs> learn from that. But I knew there'd be no power in it anyway. All right, a couple of heavier wires coming into it here we won't unplug it we'll just snip the wires and that part so a little bit to go in our mid-grade wires because we're not selling the board here we can leave the plugs on uh, so if we get that transformer these break out pretty usually normally doesn't matter if you take a bit of the board with it i've taken a lot of the board maybe a bit much let's just snip that off So into our transformer bucket. Likewise, there's a little coil here. The same could be done with that. They normally just lever off the board pretty easily. Depends how thick the wire is. So again, transformer bucket. If you want to rescue the copper wire, you can. I don't have time for that. That can then go to the e-waste station. So there's not really much else in here. We have... A little bit of wiring which we'll grab and this has a, a ferrite bead on it to um, to help stop interference and keep the noise down electrical noise uh, I do hang on to those I usually put them in a jar and they actually sell I'm not sure what people use them for snip the plug off that one and the light wire I'll put in with the data cable And the other wiring looms are all pretty short. They just go to the control panel. And, you know, I don't think we'll worry about getting those out. There's going to be only one board behind the behind the display here, which will mainly just be the display and the buttons. So nothing I want in there. So pretty much that's all we're going to do with this. Um, you could get an electric motor out of here if you wanted to. I also sometimes save the little cogs put them in a jar, people buy them for all sorts of craft ideas, but I don't have a lot of time spare to pull those out. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. Nothing very exciting in this one. This can go to the transfer station as e-waste. Okay, this one has a bit more interest because it's a vintage one and it's going to have probably better boards in it. It looks like it's got a much more involved, it might have even been a printer as well. Uh, so there could be a bigger electric motor in it. There's certainly a lot more wiring and there's a large chip under here, under the, under the back of the display. So normally I wouldn't worry with those, but let's pull that out and have a quick look at that to start with. Okay, so we do have a little board here that's certainly a better board. The rest of it's just going to be the buttons. So a smaller screwdriver required. Okay, we should be able to remove that one. So if you're new to e-waste scrapping, or scrapping electronics there's um there's not much value in these but you know they are saleable they do add up and they're kind of fun to pull out it's got out so it does have some buttons and the display but there's some good chips on the back i think we'll take the display off there i didn't think they like the liquid crystal displays on the boards so we'll get rid of that and that's not a bad little board now. No removable chips. That'll just go as a mid-grade board. 
The rest of this I'm not going to worry about. It'll just be contacts for the buttons. Okay, let's get into the rest of it. Now this is a, oh, that's a thermal print head. Uh, it could go in our dirty aluminium. I don't th think it's got any market as far as a usable part, given that this is so old. And I don't know anyone that restores old fax machines. Fair chunk of aluminium there. Wonder if that'll come off separately. Uh, it's not going to come off easily. So rather than trying to clean it all up and get clean aluminium for something that's only worth a few cents, they can just go in a dirty aluminium. We probably could have left that one on there. Okay, what's next? I think the case will come off somehow. Or that side will at least. Oh, the bottom panel comes off too. Let's do that. That will be steel. Nice big board in here. Look at this one. Oh, look at the chips on that. Unplug it. That's a well populated board. Some nice big chips. I don't even know what some of these are. There's a couple of EEPROMs we'll remove again. There's a battery there, which we probably should take off. Uh, I don't think it's going to have any value as a board simply because it's out of a fax. If it was a computer board, it would certainly have some value and I would do some research on it. But I'm pretty sure this isn't going to have any value. All right, let's get these. Well, we'll take the stickers off the EEPROMs and see what they look like in the window. No visible gold in that one. And not in that one either. So they're easy just to lever out of their sockets. And that can go, oh, better take the battery off. in our dead battery bin and there's a possibility that that board might even grade higher than mid-grade but I put them all into mid-grade unless I've got a whole stack of really really good boards um, but rather than just keep a couple separate that might pay a bit better it allows for the fact that some of the boards I put in mid-grade might not be quite mid-grade okay I've got a big coil of wire here same in this corner we need to get into the case now we need to get all this plastic casing off to access, see if there's any more boards in here. There's going to be, as I said, electric motors. There's going to be hardware, springs. Uh, I save a lot of that if it's easy to get to. This looks like aluminium. It is a nice thick chunk of aluminium. We'll weigh up everything at the end, even though we're actually talking fairly small amounts. All right, I think the top section will come off now. There we go. Oh, there's a decent board there. It's uh, not very valuable though. It's mostly power components. So we have some big transformers, some large filter capacitors. Um, there's a fuse in there we'll grab. So we'll take that board out and get some of this wiring out of the road. Now I was saying we'll weigh up what value we get out of this. It won't be very much, um, but it gives you an idea of what this sort of stuff's worth. Many times it's not really economical to scrap these things. But we do have to factor in that it is actually fun and rather therapeutic. And I do like to scrap things out sometimes when... I need to give my brain a rest from solving repair problems and you don't need to think too too much about it and it's also a good chance to watch some videos on YouTube such as e-waste bin 
when you don't want to sit there for an hour and a half and do nothing, but at least you're achieving something scrapping and you've got him as sort of background amusement. And some of you might do that with my videos. Okay, that's like a power module. And there's not much value on there for us. We can certainly take the transformers off it. Uh, is there any components that I'm going to keep? Probably not. Just having a bit of a scan over. There's a, a 5 watt, 6.8 ohm uh, power resistor there. Sometimes I do save them. They're quite useful. That looks like a... A bridge rectifier, I do save them sometimes. I've already got the fuse. Capacitors aren't worth saving at all because even old capacitors, any old capacitor is going to be probably not uh, within specs. So yeah, maybe just the rectifier and the the uh, power resistor, I think. All right, we'll put that aside and do that in a minute. There's another board under here with another fuse, um, another transformer. There are some chips on this one. So let's dig a bit deeper. There's another board under there with lots of chips too. Let's unplug the wires. And we'll let board go as a mid-grade. No, it probably won't. There's too much dead weight on it. We can take the transformer. We can take the relay. They can go in with transformers. I'll take the fuse off. And whether we want to take the chips or not, you can either leave them like I showed you earlier. Sometimes they come off, sometimes they break. Or the other way that works quite well, if you've got enough room around it, is to grab it with some multi-grips and twist. That one broke in half, but it doesn't matter if we're only saving them for scrap. Often works fine on these shorter ones. Like pulling teeth with less pain. So we'll get that transformer off. That's come off easily. And the relay while we're here. We don't need the plastic case. So a little spool of copper in the relays. There are little tiny Silver plate, uh, silver button switches in there, but I don't try and rescue those. So that's all we want off this board. What's that? It looks like a giant diode. Don't think I need that. So yeah, nothing on that board. That can go with the e-waste. Continuing to add to our wire stash. All right, we'll sort all that wire out soon. Now, what have we got left? We've got another little board in here with some IC chips on it. Maybe we can lift the whole mechanics off the plastic base now. Oh, I was wondering where that screwdriver was. It was stuck to the magnet that was stuck to the chassis. Okay, this part of the mechanism. There's nothing I want on that. They can just go all in with our shred steel. I will keep the springs. And there's the rest of our mechanics out of the base. And we just need to establish what we want here. And I don't think we want much. Oh, we want this little board, don't we? So another EEPROM here. If you don't know what an EEPROM is, they're a, a processor that's programmable via, I'm not sure how you program them, but once they're programmed, in, they have tape over them to keep the light out of the sensor. So um, I think by scraping the tape off, we um, probably corrupt whatever program there is. I don't know if they can be, I think they could be reprogrammed and new tape put over them. I'm not sure, I've never, never read much about that. But that's just a silver one in there again. So we'll put that in where the chips, they can still go as a mid-grade. We've still got a few good chips on there. What's left? We have a micro switch over here, which will come out with the wiring loom. We'll snip out our wires. I don't think I need the roller for anything going to come out anyway it's quite heavy these are all just shred pieces There's some sort of sensor there we don't need 
couple little springs that are easy to access. Keep all my springs. And we have two electric motors. Now I have to take this bracket off to access those motors. And there's a little speaker that I think I put the screwdriver through, but no real value there anyway. I get hundreds of little speakers. I can go with our, oh, I can go with our shred steel. There's a plastic gear that fell off. We'll keep that. And I don't think I need to keep these motors. They're probably stepper motors, DC 24 volts. Yeah, I don't, I don't feel I need to keep those motors in case they'll be handy one day. Because chances are they never will be. So let's cut the wiring looms off them. And we might as well just take the motors off for scrap. They can go in the shred. A couple of motors. More wiring to sort out. And I think the rest can just go straight in the shred steel like that. There's nothing else off there I want. So we're back to the bench. So the only thing we have to deal with before we start tallying up our value is this board and we might just take these few parts off I need and we'll rip the transformers off it. There is an aluminium heatsink here. There's also the main switch I sometimes keep. Okay, destruction is complete. I've salvaged a few parts as mentioned off that board so I think that can go to e-waste now. If there's anything on here that you think I should save if you know a bit about electronics, uh, let me know. Uh, I've ripped off the transformers just for scrap. I've got to sort the wiring out, just plug, or cut all the plugs off. And we'll weigh it up and see what value we got out of these two pieces of electronic equipment. So now it's notepad time. Let's go through what we've got and what sort of values or how poor the value is on scrapping out this sort of stuff. So in mid-grade boards, we I put the electric motors with the transformers because they pay the same. Uh, turns out the... EPROMs, the silver EPROMs, pay a lot less than normal uh, dip chips, which those are, just the two legs or the two rows of legs. Um, they must be better for gold recovery than these. Uh, these only, Ewe Spin was only quoting $3 a kilo for these. Um, so it's barely worth removing them, given that we get $1.80 a kilo for the mid-grade boards. But these ones are $16 a kilo. And by comparison, any of these windows that show gold contact wires in there, um, he's quoting $25 a kilo. Uh, anyway, we'll go through the notepad. I've sorted everything into its respective groups, including a few bits and pieces I'm keeping. And the value might surprise you in not such a good way. It's not really worth scrapping out uh, e-waste stuff like this, but you do have to take into account that it is quite fun to do. And some people do it as a hobby and aren't worried about the money. So there's the result for the chips when I separated them. Only three cents for the little ones, but because there was only two grams, 11 cents for the silver EPROMs. Uh, three cents for mid-grade wire. We only have a real little bit of that. All the rest of the wire I put in with the data cable because it's so fine. Uh, data cable still pays pretty well. I think it's about $2.50 a kilo. It might be $3 something. Now I forget. I just worked it out before. 33 cents there for the data cable. Mid-grade boards, uh, 65 cents. The transformers worked out at 67 cents. Of course, you can get the copper wire out of the bigger ones if you're so inclined. Aluminium was 23 cents. The irony alloy or aluminium was 13 cents. And the biggest payer of the lot was just the shred steel. Just all the pressing steel. It weighed around about 4 kilos. So... It shows that it's not very exciting to pull stuff out of here. And we ended up with a total of only $3.58. And it probably took, I don't know, I was filming and mucking around. It probably took an hour and a half to do. So not viable really as far as the scrapper goes if you're doing it for an hourly rate. Uh, I do get some usable bits and pieces. Many of you who follow my channel know that I do sell hardware through the shop. Um... And things like jars full of plastic cogs and the ferrite beads and springs. Most of you will not have any market for that. And you can only keep so much in your shed. So it's not valuable to most of you. Uh, the two power resistors and the rectifier I may or may not use. But i am decided to save some of those parts. And there was a sheet of this acrylic which may well be handy in a job. So I'll keep that. So there you go. That's all we got out of two vintage fax machines. A bit of fun but not much value. 
So there we go, guys. Another successful extraction from the emergency storage shed. This is part 14. Can you believe we've been doing we've doing this for 14 weeks? I'm going to film another one shortly for next week. Something else out of the shed. We're gradually making room. Eventually, well, soon, hopefully, we might be able to get to some of the racks on the walls. And once I clean them off, it'll give me somewhere to actually start putting stuff that is organized. Um, someone mentioned a while ago, I think it was Dean, that said what we're dealing with here is doom boxes. And I hadn't heard that phrase before. And apparently doom stands for didn't organize, only moved. So that entire shed is full of doom boxes. Uh, that makes this job sound a little bit more exciting than perhaps what it is. But thanks for watching. Thanks for coming along. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.